I'm Devanshi Brampuri, and I'm a second year dentistry student coming from Ontario, Canada. Uh, the reason I picked dentistry is because it's an amazing career, super rewarding, and personally, I've had a passion for dentistry since I was in high school. I've always been a biology and science lover, and personally, my dentist, or my orthodontist to be particular, he changed my life when it came to braces and i think it was also in grade 12 that's when i realized that wow i want to be able to make pretty smiles too and help people in need and i think that's one of the reasons why i definitely went into dentistry and just handing it over to dr delmer i have here with me as well who's also my radiology professor uh yeah my name is uh, eduardo delamere and i uh, am a lecturer in dental maxillofacial radiology which is my area of expertise and uh, I was also highly influenced by my orthodontist before I started <laughs> considering wow. the industry. Um, and my first question for you, Devanchi, is why did you choose the University of Sydney for your dental degree? I chose the University of Sydney because Australia, in particular Sydney, has been one of my dream destinations to go to for a very long time. And then when I was looking into uh, dentistry and dental schools, and when I looked into Australia, I looked into a couple different places, but University of Sydney is such a prestigious school and it has so much to offer, amazing classes. And there's so many Canadians as well. I think that was another big factor. They are um, very accepting of international students. And in terms of looking at how the program is, uh, how the program is basically sorted out, I really liked reading about it because on the website, it really shows as to how what you would expect from year one to year four and when i was looking into it i enjoyed how much practical portions were in not just theory and especially in comparison to a lot of schools in canada there they don't do simulation clinic until third year so that's one of the reasons i think i really decided to go with university of sydney because you guys emphasize on that practical component and we pick up a drill pretty much i think the second week of school so mm. I really enjoyed that portion of um, when I was researching about schools. <laughs> Do you need a science background to study chemistry? Well, it depends on the way you apply. If you apply via the double degree um, uh, alternate um, alternative, then you don't, um, as you will be combining uh, a bachelor in science, bachelor in science, and um, dentistry degree. Uh, but if you are applying to the DMD program to study dentistry, then you need um, a bachelor's degree and uh, you have a biology prerequisite, which in other words say that you need some science background. Okay. Now, um, what is your timetable like, the Bunchy? Uh, timetable, it can get a little hectic. Uh, the timetable kind of fluctuates a lot. It's more of week by week basis. And the way the program works is the students are essentially each year split into group X and group Y when it comes to the practical portion. And within the group X or group Y, we are split into further groups. So our schedule in terms of with practical um, courses, it dictates depending on where, you, where you're rostered and when you're rostered, depending on what group you're in. But I would, just, I would say it's pretty much like having a full-time job because it's Monday to Friday, eight to five. And um, classes are not compulsory, but I do prefer face-to-face -face over watching recorded lectures. But essentially we have classes at the University of Sydney campus and Sydney Dental Hospital and also Westmead Hospital. So it changes a lot, but I would say it's pretty much like having a full-time job. <laughs> Is the DMD recognized in Canada and other countries? Well, it is. And um, having said that, you do you still need to um, sit for board registrations once you go back to Canada, but um, it is it is recognized over there. What proportions of students are international? Well, it's uh, pretty much half and half. Uh, in the last intake in 2020, um, I think if I'm not mistaken, we had about 93 students in row and about 51 of them are international. And um, 47 of them are Canadian. So yeah, our home and native land sending a bunch of people over here. It's actually really nice having so many Canadians in class because you don't really feel the culture shock. And I yeah. feel like the Australians themselves, there's just 
they feel there's so many Canadians in the class and it just it feels <laughs> nice, you know, even coming all the way here and it's so far, it still feels like home in a way just because there's so many Canadians. Yeah, it, it's like an alternate universe of, you know, a warm mm -hmm. version of Canada that you guys yeah. are in. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah. So the next question is, uh, have you managed to do much travel? And if so, what's your favorite place? I try to travel a lot because I have, because of school and also have a part-time job. So there's not much leeway in terms of traveling, but I have, I try to see as many things as I can around Sydney and a little bit outside of Sydney. Uh, I'm a foodie, so I love exploring new foods, new restaurants and um, cafes, but there are two places which have been uh, my favorite. One is Jarvis Bay. Uh, we drove down there. Um, we went to see Heinz Fish, which I believe at one point was the white, had the whitest sand in the world, or it was rated the whitest yeah. sand in the world. So that was amazing to see. That's how they market it. <laughs> Very effective. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, that was definitely one of my favorite places to see. And um, Byron Bay. I think we can all agree Byron Bay is absolutely stunning. So, much so that fun. was, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. That was definitely a highlight of being in Australia. Uh, my next thing on my bucket list actually is the Great Barrier Reef, which I was going to see for the April break, but things have changed. But mm. I definitely want to go see that later on this year if I can. Good choice. <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, Stock to Delamere, who can I contact about the outcome of my application? Um, well, once you apply, you will be um, um, you have access to the Sydney Student Portal and you can follow up the, the, the progress of your application through the portal. But if you have any questions, you can always contact Sydney student. And if that would be relevant, uh, they can forward that to the admissions office. But Sydney student and the student center are the way to go. Do you find it easy to reach out yeah, yeah, I to do. your the academics? The staff that we have in the faculty, they're, they're amazing. I feel like all our lecturers are very encouraging to, um, they encourage us to email them if we have any questions about a certain lecture, a certain material, or we need any help. But in terms of the way our program kind of works is every year we also have year reps. So if the, co if the cohort has a question, or, like all together, if there's a certain concern or there are questions as a cohort, instead of, 15, 20 people kind of sending the same thing to a certain professor or faculty member. We have your reps who we kind of voice their concerns or questions to by Facebook, group chat, or whatever it may be. And then they are the ones that deal, um, they're the ones that go to the faculty. So that makes it a lot easier just going to our year reps and then they do it as a cohort. And I feel that's another reason why it's very easy to reach out to the academics. But even if you have a question in individually regarding something you don't understand, they're very welcoming to talk, even after, if they have time, professors are always um, sitting after lecture and they're willing to talk to students, give any questions right away, or you're always encouraged to just send out an email. Yeah, yeah, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a great way because not, you know, not every time we will remember um, to ask the question and sometimes it's just a matter of opportunity, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So what is the average class size? Well, each cohort uh, varies a little bit from 90 to 100 uh, students. Uh, that's the intake of the year. And then it depends on the activity. Um, lectures, they, they are usually with the whole cohort. And then the practicals, sometimes they are split in, in, in groups of, um, um, as you mentioned before, in X and Y groups, which we will split the, the cohort uh, into. Uh, in smaller tutorials, like the ones I conduct in the clinics, we have little groups of five students. Um, we also have larger groups of uh, five to 10, um, depending on the year and the activity and the, 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 the physical space that can accommodate everyone. But we have lots of opportunities for small group tutorials, larger group tutorials and um, uh, lab work and, and, and and simulation clinic environments, which will allow um, larger groups of people. It really depends on the type of activity. Do you feel safe as an international student in Australia? Uh, yeah, I actually do. Uh, I feel like there's, I mean, there's crime in every country. It's not like there's never going to be crime, but you just, I feel like you have to just be smart about it and avoid any sketchy areas per se. But to be quite honest, as somebody who lives in the city, like I've gone out to the beach, you know, have had self-isolation walks by myself. I've gone grocery shopping by myself and I've never really felt unsafe. But of course, I can only speak for myself 
where I live and where I've been. But to be quite honest, like because there's so many similarities between Australia and Canada, that's also, I think, really helped in terms of just going out. And the people are amazingly kind here. So I've not really felt any, any unsafe activities. But uh, if you, anyone ever does feel like that, honestly, if you have a roommate or a friend, just grab a friend, go out, go to the beach, wherever you may want to go. But overall, it, feel, it feels like a safe country to me. Yeah. And well, from uh, my perspective, as someone who came originally from South America, I can vouch for what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So my last question to you is, why has the biology prerequisite been added? Well, that, that was, as I mentioned, briefly mentioned before, there are two uh, ways to enroll for the DMD program, um, either by uh, having the double degree alternative in which you do a science and uh, the dentistry program combined, or if you're applying directly to dentistry, because dentistry is uh, a postgraduate course, um, we have to optimize our time with students as best as we can. And that's uh, how the biology prerequisite has, um, has taken place to, to try to optimize as much as we can the biology components and uh, the assumed knowledge that we expect from students. And, um, and by doing that, being able to um, emphasize directly on the, on the aspects that need more attention there's just so much to cover that it comes to a point when the professors themselves also expect you to know when it comes to the basics so they can mm. just focus more on the dentistry aspect and focus more on the higher education learning aspect and because there's so much material there they don't really have even if they want to they don't really have the time to cover everything yeah so it definitely yeah. helps having that prerequisite there and being a postgraduate course like uh that's one of the reasons why we offer a four-year course um because we, we, we try to, 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 to go straight into what, what is necessary to, to acquire the skills in dentistry. And um, th that's, that's the way we do it. And that may be a little bit different than other universities in the world, which may have longer courses, but do, do not require uh, this type of prerequisite.